You are a single mother. Your daughter Lisa is an intelligent girl who doesn't have any friends. You buy her a rag doll. Soon Lisa will claim that the doll can talk, and this is just the beginning of your nightmare. As a single mother, you know how hard it is to look after a 13-year-old girl. Hard, but still joyful. Her presence gives you all the strength you need. Her name is Lisa. She's a shy girl. She doesn't talk much. You got divorced 3 years ago because he cheated on you with his secretary. Lisa misses her father, but you don't allow her to see him. She adores her father, but you think he's an asshole. Lisa is a special kid. Her teacher once said that she's too intelligent for a girl of her age, but you already knew it. Her reactions are unexpectedly mature. She's also hard working. You can't expect perfection from her. Her teacher told you that you must take Lisa to a psychiatrist. You will do it soon. She's a lovely girl. Maybe because she doesn't talk much. You think that she needs friends. So you bought her a rag doll to seize her loneliness. You bought the rag doll from the local toy store. Not an expensive toy. Nothing too fancy. Lisa might still like it. You know that expense doesn't make Lisa happier. The doll is a girl with big blue eyes and curly black hair. She has a wide grin that you can call friendly. Her dress is red, matching her shoes. She also has eyebrows. The unnamed doll waits for her new owner in the kids' bedroom. You haven't brought Lisa home from school yet. It's Friday, not a sunny day. The sky is covered with gray clouds. You are driving your car. Lisa sits on the next seat. The seat belts are worn tight. She looks from the window blankly, without any expression on her face. You remember that the math exam results were going to be announced today. I bought you a rag doll today. Oh, that's nice. Thank you. She said. There isn't any excitement in her voice. You finally arrive at home. The doll is in your bedroom, Lisa. You tell her. She climbs up the stairs slowly. Apparently, she isn't so excited about the doll. You follow her up to the bedroom. She picks up the doll that's on her bed. I will think of a nice name, Lisa says. But I got homework to do first. Play come after study. Yes, study. So you leave Lisa alone in her room. You have got a lot of work to do anyway. Not only will you cook, but you also need to work on a novel's cover illustration as a freelancer artist. The deadline is close. You work hard nowadays. You are not so happy with your life. You force Lisa to study in order to have better life than yours. You work all day. The only break you take is the dinner. You don't talk about anything during the dinner with Lisa. It's 22 p.m. Bedtime for Lisa. You visit Lisa before she sleeps. She's in her pink dotted pajamas. She's only the doll in her arms. Mom, I'm going to tell you something, but you won't believe. After a few seconds of silence, she speaks. The doll can speak. She told me her name is Anna. Hmm. Go on. Lisa explains. Anna says she was nothing but a piece of light, a light that's drifting in absolute blackness, a weak light in the infinite darkness. Then she found life in this doll. She was waiting in the store for a friend. Lonely. And today, she found me. She says she loves me. And what did you tell her? Lisa smiles. And I said that I will be her new friend, and I will always love her. She continues. And then, she told me that she was happy, happy like the times when she used to be an angel. I believe you. Keep the doll. Lisa doesn't show her emotions usually, but this time you could see that she was surprised. Oh, thank you, mom. Thank you very much. You kiss her good night, and you leave her with Anna, the doll. Because of all the hard work, you begin to feel tired. And you go to bed. It doesn't take long for you to fall asleep. A few hours later, you wake up to the sound coming from the outside. You hear hysterical laughter coming from the garden. 
They belong to a girl. Specifically Lisa's. You stand up. You look outside the window. You see Lisa standing and laughing in the garden. Under the pale moonlight. She's facing back. You can't see her face. Lisa! Lisa! You shout out. But she can't hear you. Or she doesn't care. Either way, she continues laughing. And you have got nothing to do but go near her. You climb down nervously. You wear your shoes and walk to the garden. Lisa doesn't react to your presence. You approach Lisa and put your hands on her shoulder. She turns to face you. It's not Lisa's face. It's not even a human face. The texture of the face is a grey rag. The eyes are quite big for a human. So is the wide smile. The voice changes. It doesn't belong to a girl now. But a demon. She stares at you and laugh. You wake up. It was just a nightmare. You're all sweaty with terrors. The morning has already broken. And you decide to check on Lisa. Lisa is sleeping peacefully. Hugging Anna. Anna is carrying that wide smile that annoys you now. But hey. It's normal. It would be terrible if the doll's face was different than how you bought it. You go to the kitchen to prepare a weekend breakfast. You usually make omelette with sausage on on Sundays. You will repeat that habit today. You are in the kitchen and you take the sausage and eggs from the fridge. You need to slice the sausage. So you open the drawer to pick up the meat knife. Something is wrong. The knife isn't there. Search for the knife in the kitchen. You search the whole kitchen. No drawer is not looked into. You even looked into the fridge. No. The knife isn't there either. There's only one place you haven't looked inside. The garbage bin. You open the lid. You couldn't find the knife in the garbage bin either. You search the knife in everywhere possible. But it's in vain. You decide to use another knife to prepare the omelette. After you have prepared the omelette, Lisa wakes up and joins you in the kitchen. You eat the breakfast with her. She doesn't look happy. There's an uneasiness on her face. The meat knife is missing. It's strange, mom. I have no idea where that knife went. Lisa answered. Did Anna speak again? She did not speak today. But she kept changing her facial expression. Sometimes she looked so happy. Sometimes not. She was frowning. There was an anger in her face. I can't understand her. Lisa continues eating her breakfast. You have to study today. Lisa signed. This is Saturday. But okay, mom. I will work hard and be better. Then she looked away. She might be hiding her thoughts. She was not such a vocal girl. The breakfast is over. I need to study math. Says Lisa. Then climbs up to her bedroom. You also need to work on the novel cover. You're both busy now. As you work on the cover... You hear screams from Lisa's room. You rush to her room. You find Lisa standing and breathing in panic. Her arms are full of stitches. She did it! Lisa screams. Showing her heavily wounded arms. As the blood leaks down to the floor. She jumped and ran away. Lisa pointed to the open window. You look outside. You can't see any running dolls there. Maybe because she ran away. Or is it too dark outside? Or Lisa is lying. I won't allow her to harm you, Lisa. You crouch and hug Lisa. As she cries, I know how hard it is for you to believe me now. Thank you for believing me. But please, I want to stay alone. I know that she won't come back. You let her stay alone in her room, after closing the windows and locking the door. You make sure that no doll can trespass. You get into your own bedroom next to Lisa's room, so you can hear her in case she needs you. It's 3 a.m. Lightning strike and a light in your dark bedroom. You haven't slept. You don't care about the freelance work you got. All these events make you too stressed to care about business. You see Lisa's silhouette at the door. She walks in. Lisa is holding something behind her back. But you can't see it. She approaches your bed. 
climbs it and comes near you. With a sudden move, she stabs the meat knife in your belly. She stabs you once again. You didn't allow me to live my childhood. She keeps stabbing your body with insanity. I hate you, mom. I hate you. These are the final words you hear as your own daughter repeatedly stabs you and commits matricide. The end. Thank you.